Now it's time for Conservation Station. We take a look at where our hunting and fishing money goes and exactly how it helps the wildlife. All right, everybody, here we are with Rose Denmark, who is one of the owners here at Powderhorn Outfitters in Pennsylvania. The pair of David Deer. Been extinct in the wild for over 800 years. And it's a very unique story, I think, for conservation. I never saw a pair of David until today. So what can you tell me about this, this cool critter? At first, they're very gentle. I mean, they don't stand and wait for you to come to them, but, uh, they're just calmer. Yeah, I think the size has a lot to do with it too. Also, yes. There's no ground shrinkage on these animals. They looked big when we were hunting them, and then when we got up to them, it's a big critter. Yeah. I was completely fascinated by their tail. Um, every time they were walking away from us, they'd whip around in a circle, and of course it's not a, a typical deer tail no, by they, any means. they call it a donkey tail. It looks like a donkey tail. That's the first thing <laughs> I thought of. And, you know, the antlers, they look like they're on backwards. Right. Um, you know, it's one of the only deer species, I think, that doesn't have a brow tine, a guard tine. A lot of really unique things about this animal. They are also free of disease. Right. I have never in 15 years have had any problems with them. White tail, yes. The background on them is that a monk went to China and he found these deer in a preserve that the emperor had. He thought, boy, they are really unique. Pear in French is father, which is Pear David. Father David is the, the preacher that she's talking about, the monk Correct. that discovered these deer. And what I think is really unique about that story too is it's probably one of the only times where breaking a wildlife law saved a species. Back then it was against the law to even look at these deer. Pear David ended up paying off some imperial guards to take a look at these deer Very and he much. fell in love. He exported 15 of them to an abbey in England. And that's about the time that China was ravished by a devastating flood that killed all but four of the royal deer. Shortly afterwards, the Boxer Revolution started and there were still a couple left and they were all eaten. Yeah, you know, they ate them. They ate the them. last deer, they ate them. As incredible as that sounds, that should have been the end of the species. At that time, the only specimens left in the entire world are the handful of deer Father David shipped to England. Yeah. Fifteen. Fifteen. Fifteen animals. So at one point, that's all that was left, which is about as close to extinction as you can possibly get. Usually when an animal population gets down to 16, um, again from that point forward, we're talking about a lot of inbreeding, and it's usually the demise of the species. They don't make it much past yeah. them. They had tried to have them in the zoo, but they had problems with reproduction. I've had one baby stillborn, all the rest are doing fine. Yeah. Well, you saw one no, today. I, we did see one today, and again, that's a success story. The first thing that people say when we tell them we're going to shoot in a critically endangered species is, oh my God, and you're gonna shoot it? The reality is because we came in with the assistance, funding assistance, it was a heck of a donation, first of all, but we, we paid for these deer. MOPA, Moment of Peace Adventures came in, and because we are utilizing that, that's the science. We paid for this one animal, and because of that, we we're gonna have 2002 pair of David next year. Right. Because these guys have the funding to continue breeding these species and keeping them in existence, which is awesome. Incredible fact number one million about the species, at least so far, the pair David deer has not been affected by inbreeding. I also want you guys to see this example in comparison where instead of preservation, we pick conservation. And once again, the science saved the species. Most endangered animals are protected by governments. Uh, we can't go out and shoot a Bengal tiger because the government has stepped in and said we have to protect these animals. Looking back in history, that always, hasn't worked out always. Um, the pair David is very unique that all of these animals are privately owned. Um, right. which is kind of scary in one sense. These guys could literally wipe out the species tomorrow. It'd be the end of the pair of David deer. Um, but again, because we're conservation minded and we love these animals and we want them in our future, they're bred and that's why we're still here. So, in your strain specifically that you have here at Powderhorn, you said that was traced back to the... One of the students of uh, our local college wrote her thesis about the Pear David deer and in order to do that she needed a DNA sample. And when it came back, 
the report showed that they all stem back from that original group that was exported to England. Anyway, this is a very memorable haunt. I know for Matthew and for me too, it's something I'll never forget. It was a great experience. I am so glad and that's all what we want. Yeah.